Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we need to update you guys on the tropics because we have Fred out there, but we also have another tropical cyclone that has a good chance to develop into a major tropical cyclone as well. Anyway, before I get into things, be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know which of these two storms, Fred or the new tropical cyclone, do you think will end up being the most impactful and the strongest at the end of the day once they're both all said and done? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and we're taking a look at that five day graphical tropical weather outlook here just so you guys can get an idea of where everything is and what it looks like. But Fred is north of Cuba right now. I'm going to show you some interesting things about Fred. Uh, but this new tropical cyclone, 95L, the Invest 95L, uh, is headed towards the Eastern Caribbean. And it might look familiar because this is like the same exact track that Fred took. So they're almost identical in their track. And there's even a chance that this new tropical cyclone hits Florida, just like Fred is expected to do. Super interesting there and obviously a very impactful solution having back-to-back -back tropical cyclones hit the same place. So we'll need to track that situation very, very closely. Now our focus remains on Fred though because that's where the most imminent impacts are expected obviously. North of Cuba we have this low pressure center. That is where Fred is located. But let's take a look at the satellite imagery and see if it's kind of congruent with this and take a look at that. Uh, this storm definitely has a lot of its taller clouds far away from the low pressure center and the problem here is that there's a giant island in between the low pressure center and then the tallest clouds with this low pressure center. So that those two things combined tells me this storm is going to struggle. Uh, the separation there is just not a good thing for this storm's development. It's very good news for all of the folks there in Cuba and especially Florida because the north side of this storm is expected to be the one that impacts Florida. And so far, the north side is not looking too impactful yet. Things could definitely turn around, uh, but this is definitely good news for Florida in my opinion. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at that cone forecast. And as you can see, this one is expected to pretty much by this afternoon or this evening be a tropical storm according to the National Hurricane Center. So it has been a tropical depression for a while. They have it re-intensifying into a tropical storm and then hitting the Florida Keys directly. You can see that most of the main area of Florida, the mainland of Florida there, is expected to be to the north and to the east of this tropical cyclone. And this one is going to skirt along that west coast of Florida and then likely hit the panhandle of Florida where it's going to head inland as a tropical depression, likely bringing a lot of rain and some winds to those inland states like Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, even Kentucky, possibly down the road, even the Ohio State states down the road as well. Super interesting, obviously, to have these inland states expecting impacts. We're going to talk about the impacts in just a moment. But for now, what we're going to do in a moment is move on and take a look at the spaghetti model guidance, the intensity guidance, and then start talking about those impacts. All right, now here we are taking a look at that spaghetti model guidance. We're only going to take a look at the individual models here because things are so confident that we don't really need to take a look at the ensemble models anymore. But as you can see, a very far western track would pretty much be an Alabama hit, which is just to the west of the Florida Panhandle. So it is very, very likely that a Florida Panhandle impact is what happens here. Now, the interesting thing is that they begin to split after that point. We see some having it head west, even towards Arkansas or Missouri. Some having it head straight north towards Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, and then some having it head east, maybe back towards the Atlantic, like we see some heading offshore after Florida. We have some having it head offshore of the Delmarva in New Jersey there. So there's many different solutions happening after that. And if it heads offshore of the East Coast, don't be surprised if it has a chance to redevelop, although that doesn't seem like the most likely track at this point, thankfully. Now, for... Our model intensity guidance, as you can see, we're just below tropical storm status, and there's only like three of these models that have it not hitting that tropical storm status again, but a majority do have it hitting that tropical storm status again. The good news here is that it doesn't actually look like it's going to be a strong tropical storm. It looks like it's going to be on the weaker half of that intensity there, as you can see, which is going to be the better half to be on, obviously, for everybody impacted. So that is good news. And within the 84 to 96 hours, we should be below tropical storm status. Again, that's after it hits Florida, pretty much. Here is the most likely arrival time of tropical storm force winds with the probability of tropical storm force winds as well on screen. So the colors is the probability. Those black dashed lines, or not dashed, black solid lines is the dates 
and times that it's expected to hit. So for the Florida Keys, Saturday at about 8 a.m. is when those tropical storm force winds are expected to begin. And you guys have about a 50 to 60 percent chance of having tropical storm force winds. So that's pretty much where you're at. You can see that color table on the bottom right for reference so you can find your location. Uh, but Saturday at 8 p.m. it should be around central Florida or south central Florida, I would say. Sunday at 8 a.m. it's going to be kind of north of Orlando already and Tampa. And then by the time we're reaching 8 p.m. on sa on Sunday, you can see that it will be impacting the Florida Panhandle. But you can find your area and find the time there and the probability for sure. Here's the total rainfall expected with this one for many folks. And as you can see, if you're anywhere in the lighter greens, it's 1 to 2 inches of rainfall. Darker greens is 2 to 4 inches of rainfall. 4 to 6 inches of rainfall there in the two yellow regions for Florida. And then 6 to 10 inches of rainfall there for Miami and the rest of southern Florida. And then areas south of the Florida Panhandle that could come on shore though. This is obviously a major flooding risk with this amount of rainfall coming down. So we're going to be watching very closely for that flooding risk. This is a major amount of rainfall coming down. And that is the majority of those major impacts we do anticipate with this one. Here's the total accumulated wind gusts real quickly. As you can see, if you're anywhere in the blues, you're below 34 miles per hour. If you're in the greens, you're 34 to 50 miles per hour. And then the orange is there is going to be 50 to 70 mile per hour. So that's mostly for the Florida Panhandle. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're finally going to talk about that new Invest 95L. Now here's the satellite imagery for this one and as you can see it has a nice look to it. I think this one is kind of far along with its development. It has kind of that rigidness there that kind of looks like a saw. That is what we're looking for in an intensifying tropical cyclone and it does have that look. So here's the probability of tropical depression according to the European model. And as you can see, we have a 90 to 100% chance there within that area in the Eastern Caribbean where that 95L new invest is going to be heading. So this model is very confident this one at least becomes a tropical depression. Obviously, it has a 90 to 100% chance for Fred as well. And also look offshore of Africa, we have a 40 to 50% chance with a new uh, tropical wave as well. So the tropics are really waking up and eventually that one actually upgrades to about a 50 or sorry, 60 to 70 uh, percent chance there of tropical depression status within, uh, that's going to be for August 18th through 21st. So yes, that one does have a good chance to develop. Here's the probability of tropical storm. So for Fred, it has a 40 to 50 percent chance of it regaining that tropical storm status. And then for this new one, it has a 20 to 30 percent chance of it becoming a tropical storm down the road. I do anticipate those could come up. Uh, that probability there for the new invest. Here's the spaghetti model guidance according to the GFS and Samba model. And as you can see, it is likely going to be heading towards Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, maybe a little bit north of where the uh, Fred went, Tropical Storm Fred, uh, but likely towards the southeastern United States, as you can see, according to this model. Now, the Canadian model is just all over the place. I usually, I just hate the way this model acts usually because we have anything from a Louisiana impact to a Spain impact, as you can see, with that one that just goes straight back towards uh, Europe. So this one just is not giving us any sort of solid answers. Here's the individual models, and we get a little bit more information here. So anywhere from about Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Haiti, Cuba, northward towards heading towards the Carolinas is pretty much our cone at this point. Uh, according to a lot of these models that we've seen. So that is what we're looking at here. Here's the intensity guidance. And as you can see, a lot of these models take this one straight towards hurricane status, as you can see. Actually, I would say a majority at this point, and even towards category two status. And a lot of them are even on their way towards the end of this model run here at hours 168 towards category three status or more. So there's some bullish forecasts here from a lot of these models with this new tropical cyclone, and it could be our strongest uh, tropical cyclone of the year so far. So we're going to be watching this one very closely, obviously. I want to mention there is a couple that keep it much lower towards just tropical storm status. So that is also a possibility at this point. Uh, but there's two major groups of models here, obviously, and one of which takes it towards a very major uh, tropical cyclone, obviously. By the way, here's the National Hurricane Center's uh, probability forecast for this one because I never showed it. 70% uh, chance there of development for over the next five days for this one. For today's confidence tab, we're at a five out of six. Uh, obviously, I feel very confident in these two things. Obviously, we haven't said too much about what... I, I really haven't talked about anything that just isn't low probability here. We, we do expect Fred to become a tropical storm. That's more likely than not. Uh, we do expect a lot of rainfall and a lot of winds down there for the southeast, obviously. And then basically 95L is the one that we're a little less confident in. But I do expect that one to actually develop here shortly because it looks like it is currently undergoing development so we're going to watch that one closely as well. 
For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how do you think September's going to go? And Dave Williams said, September will start off warm, dry, and hot for some parts, and then get stormy and cool off considerably. Uh, and I think that's how September's usually go, honestly, in my opinion. I know it's kind of obvious, it's like later in September, you're closer to winter, so duh, but really it can go either way. But I feel like as of late, we've mostly seen a very summer-like early portion of September, and then sometimes we get, you know, some stronger cold fronts towards the end of September, which I'm so excited for. I love those first colder days. It's just so exciting. I think I, I just nerd out about that type of stuff. Let me know if you feel that way as well, if you're just always so excited for the first like day you can wear a sweater, stuff like that. I don't know, I love it so much though. For today's patron highlight of the day, I'm, I'm gonna thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Lure the Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Capite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Falego, Gary, Sean Colisi, Dwight Phelan, and Stephen Kernenthal. If you would like to be a part of this exciting patron ad screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, Heroframs1 and Capite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.